What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. This is part four of the Ronald Ranch Modern Shed Build. As you guys can see in the beginning of this video, we got to the fourth and final wall built and in place. Now all we need to do is run around and put all of our fire blocking in. Well, first we need to make sure this building is all nice and plumb and squared up. A couple of cribbles I need to put above these windows that I forgot about. And then there's also a stud that needs to go here that I had forgot about again. Not a framer by trade. So framing is one of those things that like, I don't always remember everything that's supposed to go in in the very beginning. So on walls like this, if we were to take a piece of drywall or plywood or whatever you want to put, and you were to come all the way to the inside corner of this wall, we have nowhere in the corner to screw into because there's not another stud right there. So we need to put those in. You'll see I did it over here on this front wall that's gonna house the garage door. That one we have a stud to bite into, so when we go to uh, again, put whatever finish we're gonna be putting on the inside of here, we have somewhere to screw into. That corner is good, it's just these two corners that uh, it's just something I totally forgot. Now, before we can go ahead and kind of rack these things exactly where they need to be, I need to lock in the bottom plates. So I am just using uh, half inch wedge anchors, I should probably be using five eighths, but we're using half inch by five and a half wedge anchors. And what these do is we're gonna drill a hole with the roto hammer. And you'll notice it has this little collar at the bottom. So when we will hammer these into the ground, you use the nut to tighten it. What it does is it starts to pull this bolt up, which then wedges this collar down and it expands inside. And that actually grips into the concrete and locks it in. So I've already got one in place right there. We're gonna go ahead and use the Milwaukee cordless roto hammer. Let's put another one in right here. We'll just hand tighten this for now and then we'll come back later with a ratchet and we'll actually cinch those down. Now that we have the bottoms pinned in place, we're going to try to rack this back to plumb. So this wall right here needs to kink this way just a little bit. That'll get that front face plumbed. And then we're gonna screw in this diagonal brace. But I know a lot of guys can screw the brace in and then like use uh, pry bar on the bottom and get this thing to go where they want. I don't, I don't know the proper pry technique for that. So I've just tied a strap around there. We're gonna pull this front wall out a little bit until everything is plumbed up and then we're gonna screw this brace on and that brace will stay on until we put our outside sheathing or our plywood on the outside, which will then lock everything in place. <laughs> Me and Abel are going ahead and putting in all of the fire blocking and man is it nice to have him helping me because this is the part I dread when it comes to framing. This building's not too big but if you do something really big and you got to come in and slam all of these little blocks in which should be the same size but sometimes they vary a little bit. So one of the methods I like is just hold a 2x4 in place. Um, we'll use this for an example. Hold it in place where you want it, put a little mark right there and cut it instead of running around and measuring everything. Um, there's a few methods I've seen lately of guys that uh, when they have the wall on the ground, they put the blocking in, they just hold the block in place, eyeball where the saw goes, cut it, drop them in place. Another thing you'll see a lot is you'll see people stagger their fire blocks. So you can see I have my line right here. They'll do one um, block on this side of the line, they'll do another one on this side of the line and then the next one down below. And the reason being is so that they can shoot nails in on both sides into the blocking. I remember I was working with Dave a long time ago and I went to start staggering my, my fire blocks and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, you know, how am, I, how am I supposed to nail them, you know? And he's like, man, if you can't toenail, you shouldn't be uh, doing this type of work. And so ever since then, uh, it looks way better when they are all in line. It makes it easier when you're putting in insulation because they're all the same exact cut. Uh, but ever since then, I do not stagger my fire blocks. Uh, I got shamed out of it. So the way I come in and nail these things is I'll toenail up underneath on the side that has a block already. And then on this side, I come around and we'll shoot them straight in. And there you go. So pretty quick day today getting everything nice and wrapped up. All of our double top plates are on and are locking the walls together. We've got all of our fire blocking in all the way around. 
So we are pretty much good to go to start on the roof. Again, none of us are framers, but having a couple of extra hands to make cuts. I'm the one up here doing all of the math, which whew, Lord help us on that one. Um, but now that I have a couple extra guys that I can hand down to, they can make the cuts and stuff for me. Uh, it's gonna make it go a little bit quicker. It's definitely gonna be quicker than when I did the hunting blind. Uh, it also helps that we're not 10 feet off the ground. That's that's pretty nice to be working somewhat on the ground here. So we'll jump back on in the morning. Well, y'all, this morning we've got a major problem, major problem here out at the ranch. Uh, this is not acceptable, this is not okay. Okay. Probably here as I'm walking through the grass, we've got uh, we've got some frozen grass right up on the wall. This is all ice. This is starting to thaw out a little bit. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no! Oh, look at that! We got ice. You know what that means? That means it's too damn cold for me out here. Now, I was right about to say it's actually not that cold out here. The sun is making it nice, and then these freaking clouds rolled in, and now it, it's getting a little bit chillier. So today, we are jumping back on, and we are going to start getting the roof all nice and framed. We went ahead and got our scaffolding put on on the inside because well, this is a decently tall building, and I don't want to do a bunch of stuff off of ladders, especially with everything being a little bit moist and slippery. Uh, I know I've said it a million times throughout this process, not a framer. There is probably a very easy mathematical solution to figure out where to notch uh, my two by sixes that are going to frame out my roof, but I don't know that mathematical equation. So the way I do things and the way my brain works is I just set it in place and mark what I want. So I put a two by four here and I'm gonna put a two by four on the front right there. And then we're gonna be able to sit my two by six on top of those and then draw where this two by four top plate is. And that'll let me know where I need to notch that. And assuming everything looks good and goes good, then we just repeat that for however many go across here. So I don't know the exact height that I wanna be for these, but I'm gonna come just a hair below this top plate and we can adjust as needed. Okay. Maybe. We'll see. All righty. Now you can see all of our lumber is pretty bananaed. Let's see if we can find one that's kind of straight. Ooh, that one's, that one's a piece of crispy bacon. I'm gonna put one on top of the dos pa cuatro. Maybe two afuera, yo la entro. It's better than able. Alrighty, so I think this actually needs to come up higher. So I'm not doing like a U-shaped notch. We just wanna make a little notch for this to sit right there. So we'll adjust for that in a second. But my original plan was for this to be a two foot overhang on the front. So let's see what that looks like. Actually it looks kind of small. There we go, two foot. Six. Yeah, I'm thinking two six looks better. Looks a little more substantial. And then if we have two six overhanging in the front, what do we have in the back? 18 and a half. That's if we don't cut these. Um, I don't really see a need to cut these. I mean, you know, what's wrong with 18 and a half? The original plan was two foot overhang in the front, one foot overhang in the back. But we might just cheat this a little bit. Only poquito arriba. Maybe we'll. Nice stuff. Okay, that's so be it. So we've got our notch. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this. This jigsaw blade is completely shot. Those teeth are super flat. Smoke. Smoke. Mucho smoke. smoke huh? Okay, we're gonna do a little check, check. Oh, it's a little lado. Let's see how we're looking. Look at that, beautiful. Está bueno? Un poquito largo? No, está bien un poquito largo, porque maybe es mucho diferente. I cannot find a fresh jigsaw blade. So we are using the old Sawzall. Uh, most framers would probably just overcut these so they don't have to actually cut out that little center section, but.
metru. Ok. Espera, okay. no me pongo en marcas primero aquí. Now, obviously, I was hoping my layout would work to where um, these two by sixes hit right on top of the studs in the wall. But because again, I'm not a framer and I probably should have done this differently, but I framed this outside wall, these two outside walls first, and then this wall stood up in between them. So my layout doesn't exactly work if I pull from the top plate over um, to hit on my 16s. If I would have did this wall first and made it the full width of the building, um, we wouldn't have this issue. But uh, here we are. So I'm just going to keep it on my 16 inch layout and we're just going to run with it. That way at least my plywood and stuff works out versus trying to fudge some things to line up with the studs in the wall. I also think I did not go tall enough on the front. Uh, this roof has a slope to it. It's not a gnarly slope. I think for a more modern look, a, a bigger pitch would look better, but we're definitely, I mean, we could change it now, but we're not changing it now because we cut enough of these. Uh, so we're just going to call it good. Plus we really don't want to be like above that part of the house where it's kind of next to. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, but whatever. So now I'm just gonna toenail these in for now, and then we'll come back later with our hurricane ties and attach everything properly. I will say, sometimes this gun likes to toenail, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe if we, if we adjust her a little bit here. Don't worry y'all, we are going to make sure we set all of our nails with our little uh, nail set and our punch here. We aren't gonna let them just stick out like that. Uh, we got the donkeys over here though, they just, oh, oh they're, they're over here playing, getting a little rowdy. They had a stampede a second ago, I should have filmed that. It's always cool when the donkeys start like stampeding. All the other animals are like, yo, what the hell is going on? It sounds just like the movies. Hearing all their hooves stampeding around the house. Now this side gets a little sketchier because the scaffold doesn't go all the way and as soon as you step out past where the scaffolding frame is, ugh, these boards like to flip up on you. So you gotta be pretty careful. That's why none of these got set right because I really couldn't get the angle I wanted with the nail gun. Yeah, I'll move the scaffold. Alrighty, y'all. Well, the good thing about building this thing right next to our orange trees is uh, gives us a good, good way to grab these things all the way up on the top of the tree. I know a lot of you guys spot these in the back of my videos. If there was a way to figure out how to like properly ship these to you guys, we should totally offer these. This is way more than we can ever eat. Um, everybody that comes here takes them, and they say these things are the best. Uh, that one is all blood oranges. This one's regular oranges. That one's like some type of mandarin or some type of I don't know. Those ones are smaller. And then we got that orange tree. We got a ton of grapefruit trees. That giant one over there puts off like hundreds of grapefruit uh, multiple times a year. And then we think that one's a lemon tree. I think this is the first year that one's really gonna produce for us. All right, so we've covered the span of the roof. And now we need to work on the eaves. And the eaves are basically like what you see on the house right there. I know the sun is a little bit bright and I'm thankful that that sun is out right now. I like to build mine on the ground. So I'm basically gonna double up, um, again, some two by sixes. So I'm gonna take a two by six. We're gonna run 16 inch pieces. Then we're gonna do another full length two by six. And then we'll have basically this entire eave assembled. And then we can just pick it up and put it in place and screw it in. Let me tell you guys though, these two by sixes are, whew, they're bad. They're super warped. Thankfully, I'm gonna try to, I think I'm gonna stucco up underneath all the eaves and the soffits and everything, but uh, so it's gonna hide how bad some of these are, but some of these are pretty bad. I cut this one, let's see. One of the ones we got was, was completely just broken almost all the way through. Alrighty, now I'm marking my layout for all of those blocks that we just cut. Now, for these blocks, I'm going to screw them in. It gives me a little bit more control, and if something gets kind of wonky and out of whack, I could just unscrew it instead of, uh, you know, sawzawing this thing or trying to beat the nails out of it. We'll pull these screws out. 
And one little trick for you guys, if you're ever doing stuff where you have pulling screws out that have a couple screws in it, when you get down to your last two screws, don't unscrew one all the way. Let it have a little bit of bite. Otherwise, when you start to unscrew this one, it, the screw stays in and basically the whole board comes out and you have a screw sticking out the backside. So get one most of the way out because basically you need to get these teeth into this wood. So as long as you get this one out to where a little bit of the teeth are in this board as well as that board, that one will come out and then we can pull this one the rest of the way out. So now we are going to slam up against the bottom of these. Make sure we come out far enough. Awesome. You can see like this screw right here doesn't have any of the teeth biting into this board so it won't come out. So just gotta put a little pressure on her. Alrighty y'all. Now for the fun part, carrying that thing over getting it up in place. So we ran a little bit short on two by sixes. I actually just got back from going to the store. Uh, first, I locked the keys in the 6.0. That was fun before I even left the house. I started it, was letting it warm up, but the Viper security system that I had installed on it, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the guy that installed it programmed it to lock the doors as soon as the ignition turns over, which I hate and I need to change the programming. Normally, I unlock the door and then close the door if I'm gonna walk away and let it warm up, but I had the dogs out with me, got totally distracted, and ended up locking the keys in the car. Me and Abel managed to get in and get it open. It took a while, definitely delayed me going to the store, but we have enough two by sixes now to finish the route. I went ahead and lagged in some big structural screws into the top of this two by six to kind of keep this from wanting to lean this way. A piece that we screwed on and we've actually got it now to where it sits dang near perfectly level. You can see the level right there. And then once we put that front fascia board right there, that's gonna really help to lock these two wings in place to keep them from wanting to sag over time. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the blocks for this other side and then let's get that up there. And we put our front and our back fascia boards on and we can pretty much call the rough framing, well, actually, I don't wanna say that because we need to put a bunch of blocking, but once we get a bunch of blocking, then we can call the roof framing done. And this was super sketchy driving here. It was like just almost weighted perfectly to where it wants to come down. And of course, as the afternoon sets in, it is starting to get a little bit colder, y'all. This is gonna be fun. We've got Papa Rhino on his way up. Abel leaves in about an hour, so we should have just enough daylight to hopefully, again, get this finished out, or at least get all of the fascia all the way around. We'll get the scaffolding switched back over to this side, and I'm gonna do a little more preparing this time now that I know what we've learned, putting that side up. Uh, I'm gonna get those uh, eight inch structural screws in now. Oh, and we've got the horse coming over to inspect. Everything looking good? You gonna sign off on it? Where's your hard hat? You're underneath scaffolding. You don't even have a hard hat on. Inspectors, you know? I think they can just do whatever they want. So we fold our little temporary braces off this side. We're now putting them on the other side. We've got Papa Rhino here rocking the heat wave sunglasses. Uh, there you go, boys. You like them? Yep. Where can they get them? Yeah, you don't even know. <laughs> Heatwavevisual.com, use code DMAXRHINO10 to save you some money on these bad boys. You guys know I'm not a big fan of a whole lot of sunglasses. I wore the same electric swing arms for probably the last over 10 years because they don't squeeze your temples. They don't put a lot of pressure on your nose because I get headaches if, from glasses like that. Well, these bad boys right here, I believe these are the Quattros. Don't quote me on that. Either way, there's a link down in the description to get you guys a pair of these, but they fit super good, super comfortable. Don't squeeze your head. That's why you see me wear them all the time. I wouldn't wear them if they sucked. Your nose, it doesn't do anything. There you go. Oh, get you a pair. Este lado es para de shed. 
¿Este es para casa? Sí, este es para abuela. Este es para afuera, ¿no? Outside. Sí. Es más fácil para allá. Ok. Here we go. Next one coming in. Okay. Go up right there. I'll get it. Yep. Come on, Abel. Yep. Yep. All right. Ready? Just flushes oh. out. Push. I gotta shoot your side first because you're right, and then we gotta pick up Abel's side. Coming over, coming over. We're going climbing. Let's see, we are 13 foot, two and a half. This piece out because it was actually one of the nicer, straighter boards. I wanted a really nice straight one on that front piece right there. So it doesn't look all wonky. Beautiful. Alrighty, y'all. Now the fun part, making sure everything lines up the way we like it. Arriba, arriba. Ahí está, espérate. Push poquito on este. Poquito arriba. That's a dangerous one there, guys. You see, when you got a bunch of knots like this, they make weird stuff happen. We got our last board up there. Let's get it nailed in place. Down. This is my own. No, but okay. Okay, guys. Well, the roof is pretty much fully framed, other than a little bit of blocking we got to do, which is always the boring part. I gotta say, it's looking pretty good. I kind of went back and forth on how far I wanted these wings to come out, but I think we did 16 plus the doubled up two by, so there's another three inches. So they come out 19 inches on each side, which I think is a uh, pretty good overhang. We got our two foot six in the front. We've got our 18 inches in the back. Everything is inconsistent and that's weird, but whatever, we're gonna roll with it. Looking good from the inside. I was hoping we'd have the sheathing done today, but with a couple little hiccups that set us back, uh, we're just gonna have to roll into that tomorrow, which will essentially be the next video. Super excited to see this coming along. I think we are very close to getting the windows figured out, uh, which is good. We are gonna be able to make some custom ones to fit up there. I was a little worried about having to do it myself, but I think we're gonna actually have some real windows made uh, that small to fit up there. I know a lot of people were concerned about having enough room to mount the hardware for a garage door. I think we're gonna be able to pull it off. We have eight inches plus by the time I put my two by right there, that's gonna be my trim piece. We will have 10 and a half inches, oh, sorry, nine and a half inches. Ideally is 12, but they should be able to make it work with that. And we have that center section right there if they wanna mount something for the spring or whatever. I think they'll they'll manage and we do have enough room on the sides here to get the track in. I just wouldn't wanna be the guy that's doing it because better have some, some small tools to fit in there. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that we do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. Roll the outro! Damn. Uh. Yeah.
Uh. Yeah. Uh. 